Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and we are doing this video from an Airbnb in Calgary. We have actually moved over here, uh, what, three weeks ago now. Um, we're doing a couple of Airbnbs until we settle into our final home. If you can hear a humming in the background, it is the fridge in this house. It's incredibly loud. Uh, it's a bit knackered, you know, but hey, it's not our house. So today's video is gonna be all about Xanthan gum how you use it in your ice cream, what it is, and how it's made. So let's just get on and talk about it. So what exactly is xanthan gum? Well, it's a polysaccharide, which is a carbohydrate that is fermented using another carbohydrate source, either corn or soy or something like that. And it goes through a whole process where it produces a barrier very much like a goo or a slime and when that goo or slime it has a technical name which we'll go through in a minute when that is worked in the factories it gets dried and turned into a powder that's xanthan gum so what is the fermentation process so the fermentation process of the production of xanthan gum is the use of a bacteria called Xanthomona campestri. And so in the fermentation process of the Xanthomona campestri, it is fed with another carbohydrate source, like I said, corn, soy, or wheat. And that separates the sugar into the likes of glucose and mannose. Now after that happens, there is a, like I've described it before, as a goo or a slime, it's actually called a polysaccharide capsule and that is a protection over the whole the whole fermentation process so that it doesn't go off or get affected by other, other outside sources now once the fermentation process is complete that capsule that fermentation capsule is treated with alcohol and that kills off the excess bacteria what you're then left with is an inert gel that is then dried out and then crushed and refined into a plain white powder that we know as xanthan gum. There may be slightly different methods to produce xanthan gum depending on the company that makes it or the country that they're in, but by and large, this process of fermentation, heating to kill the excess bacteria, drying, treating with alcohol and cleaning, and then turning into a powder is the basic process all around the world. Xanthan gum, thankfully, is a very common additive all around the world, so it's been subjected to a lot of testing, uh, both in North America, Europe, pretty much everywhere you can buy it. It's been tested within an, in, within an inch of its life, so it has been deemed safe to use. It is in everything. It is in, obviously, commercially available ice creams. It's available in sauces, cooking, liquors. It's in mayonnaise and ketchup and you name it it's in everything but not just foods it's also in commercial paints used as thickeners it's used in engineering cycles for what's called mud which is a liquid used when drilling or working with metals to reduce the heat and friction it's used in there it, it's used basically everywhere so if you're afraid of using xanthan gum then you shouldn't be because I pretty much guarantee you've had it somewhere in your life. Something that you've eaten has had it in. And the use of it in ice cream is a really good way to make sure that all that time and effort you've spent at home with your ice cream machine, your result lasts much longer in the freezer. So let's talk about how we use it in ice cream. Xanthan gum in ice cream is one of those stabilizers that you kind of have to be a bit careful with because it's quite strong. It's quite a powerful stabilizer. And by powerful, I mean that it doesn't take a lot to thicken up your base. So there are other type of stabilizers that need to be heated up to certain temperatures. Some are 65 centigrade, some are 75, some are 90, depending on what they are. Xanthan gum doesn't need that. So really what it needs is to be gently combined with some sugars before adding it into your ice cream base. Now, I would recommend adding it in a cooler stage of production. If you add it into your base while it's on the hob, 
it will thicken very, very quickly. And if you're not careful, it will over thicken your base and your resulting ice cream, once churned and frozen, will be slightly slimy to the taste. And that's not kind of pleasant. So how much do we need to use in our ice cream? So as with most stabilizers, it's recommended to start with 0.1% of your base mixture. And by that, it means you need some small scales to measure such light amounts. It's very difficult to take a teaspoon or something like that and measure out your stabilizer because you just won't get an accurate amount. Now, another benefit of xanthan gum is it is a stabilizer. It is also used as an emulsifier and it also aids mouthfeel or texture for your ice cream. So it's a good general stabilizer to use if you don't want to go to town and buy different types of carrageenan, guar gums, you know, etc, etc. If you want to start with stabilizing your ice cream, xanthan gum is a really good place to do so. So once you've added your xanthan gum into your ice cream base, you can leave it to cool down as you would do normally, whether you do that over an ice bath bowl situation or you put it in the fridge to chill down for a few hours, the choice is yours. And then you can churn your ice cream as normal. And what you will notice if you do a comparison side by side is that the stabilized version will come to texture a little bit quicker. And then when you put it in a freezer, it actually freezes much more appropriately with less ice crystal formation as well which is one of the biggest bonuses for using stabilizers in your homemade ice cream. Now, finally, I just want to talk about some people's fear of stabilizers because they're made in labs. Everything we eat is, you know, not everything, obviously, but a lot of the products we eat are made in labs and factories. You know, if it comes out of a packet, it's come from a lab or a factory. This is no different. It's a specific way of producing something so if you're vegan then doesn't mean all your products are straight out the ground it means that your products are treated in certain ways and that's the same with this this product is made for specific reasons and uses in culinary arts so there's really nothing to fear but i will say some people have a reaction to xanthan gum much like they have a reaction to any other type of food or anything in life to be fair you could have a reaction to pollen but you're not going to stop going outside you you would just you know work with that allergy same with foods you can be literally allergic to anything and it doesn't make that food product bad for you it just means that you personally can't deal with it your body can't process it so if you for some reason you feel that xanthan gum isn't for you and you are having a mild reaction such as bloating or ibs symptoms then maybe try a different stabilizer until you find one that suits you well that's it for xanthan gum it's a nice easy place to start it's a nice stabilizer it's cheap to buy you can buy it pretty much anywhere amazon is a great source loads of different people sell it as well make sure you buy it from a reputable seller because there's lots of people selling random stuff online these days but we'll talk about xanthan gum again in one of our ice cream videos and we'll start to link some of these products up so you can actually see and understand a bit more about the result as we go forward so hopefully you enjoyed our first solo stabilizer video we're going to go through all of them over time um, as i said this is our, an airbnb our new ice cream machine has been ordered unfortunately the company have just told me that it's going to be delayed which is not ideal but it is what it is so within the next couple of months we're going to be skip churning making some new flavors of ice cream got another airbnb to stay in um, i'll show you that when we move in there in a couple of weeks and then after that we'll just get making ice cream as we did before so thank you all for listening if you've got this far in this video and we look forward to seeing you next time take care mm -hmm.